Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And once again, it's time for another Orc Mill workout. And today was max effort lower day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please click like down below. Uh, we did some different stuff today. Uh, did some different stuff. Happy with the workout overall. Uh, I'm quite happy with the cambered bar squats. And the reason is because I'm using 101 pounds of chains and there's very, very little on the ground. The overwhelming majority is, is up in the air. And my PR, which was really grindy, has been 535 with this bar for straight weight. So this essentially, by me getting up to 465, 465, that means that we're locking out quite a bit more, uh, quite a bit more than that PR. And I've really struggled on the way up before, like near that top half, it was a grind. So for me to get that, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And uh, I think we can notice here, definitely we're seeing the slow loss of body fat accumulating. It's just funny because I had people say, well, if you're eating the way you're eating, then why, why are you so fat? And it's hilarious because it's like they've, people have been watching me slowly lose fat while eating that way. All right, doing the whole chicken, brown rice, broccoli type bro eating is essentially what I'm doing. I'm not saying I don't eat other things, but, but those are more or less staples. It is that sort of diet. You know, it's brown rice, oats, fruit. Okay, that's most of my calories. Lean protein, vegetables. And I eat a lot of food. But still, we're seeing the slow loss of body fat. And that's going to continue. All right, think about how much I've lost in the last six to seven months, just which is only, you know, 11 pounds of body weight. But what happens if we do that again and continue to make muscle gains? Okay, only a parent. So I'm happy with this though, as far as the lift goes, because it means that I got at the top, I got 566 at the top, okay? Well, a little less with the chains. Um, I'm overall pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. And I felt like I left some in reserve. I didn't take these to the bleeding edge. Then I used my new bar and this was hard. Probably had people say, hey, why, why this bar? Uh, and this looks awkward, it feels awkward. I'm not going to lie, having to take the wider grip in addition to the deficit almost adds another inch of deficit itself. Because anyone who's ever pulled wide like that, if you look at the angles, we're taking like another inch. And I couldn't lock it out because I noticed that on the ramp up, that top bar, because it's turned up, hits me right in the belt, right in the stomach. I can't follow through. So we end up having to stop short of the lockout. And this is awkward. I got up to the 455. And I had to kind of reset. I pulled it from a bad angle, trying to get deep enough to reach down there and get it. And people say, well, why, why that bar? Look where the bar is. The bar would be in my feet. You can't pull this big of a deficit. And I could even pull it from a, from a deeper deficit with this bar. But that felt wrong. I had the bar too far forward. Had to roll it back closer to my shins, pull it up. That was hard. It was hard. And then I have to stop at the lockout because the thing hits me. And I, I called it there. Um, that's a good, solid training max, even though it is over 150 pounds less than what I can deadlift. Now, I should have a deadlift bar soon. I actually have acquired another deadlift bar besides the one I'm having made because I'm not going to have it soon. Uh, I found a reasonable deal on another deadlift bar that I hopefully should have in another week. I'll have two deadlift bars actually coming up. So... I cleaned the knurling because I, I knew the knurling had, had almost no knurling left on this power bar. So I scrubbed it all out this last weekend. Used 301 oil. I haven't cleaned it in over a year. My bad. I was hoping I'd be able to grip that better. But no, I'm struggling with the double overhand with 405. So what's going to be our goal? Not with the deadlift bar, but with this bar, a power bar, it's going to be to hold 405 several times. We need to build to that. Okay, and this goes to show that a lot of the grip training I've been doing, while it, it helps the general grip, it's not helping my deadlift grip directly. So let's focus on the things it will. Bar holds. More pendlay rows with the normal bar taken to limit sets. But I'm going to do these twice a week and then I'm going to do pinch block work. I, I'm not worried about big bulky things like the axle bar anymore. Okay? It's not really helping even my double overhand. So we're focusing more on just squeezing everything harder, squeezing all my benching, all my pressing really hard. Okay, I'm going to start doing holds twice a week on my lower days, double overhand, 
rack poles. In this case, I'm using the safety slings. And someone had asked me about that. I thought you were against rack poles. I am. I'm not loading a thousand pounds on there and bending and destroying my equipment. I'm doing grip work. And even if I were to load for a double overhand 700 pounds and do a mixed grip, we're still not strapping up and pulling for maxes. We're using grip training. Okay? It's not the same as throwing on straps and doing a little curtsy squat to, to move the weight four inches. That has no benefit. Destroys equipment, beats you up. This is grip training. That's it. Now, as I've said before, above the knee rack pulls are a useful grip training tool, but they, they don't serve any purpose with straps. None. Nothing. They're not useful at all. So, I did the 365 for three holds after that. Uh, so, we need to build up. That needs to be a short-term grip goal. Let's get up to where we can do those holds with 405. And we'll assess it from there. Then, we did... The good mornings. Now, it's going to take me a bit to build up to five sets of this. Three sets was super, super hard. Coming back and not having done the power ones again with the bent knee. Okay, because I've been doing the straight leg ones and I'm going to do heavy ones on this day in place of the glute bridges. Heavy ones in place of the glute bridges. And then we're going to do straight leg ones as a more accessory movement on speed day. I need the extra upper back. These are going to build my overall hip extension strength though and glutes and everything it gives me a second big exercise and i can set performance goals on this what's a goal need to be 405 for 10. we need to get to 405 for 10. what's this today what's an 85 pound bar anyone can look it up calibrated plates on there 355 to 3 by 10 with it and they were challenging so i need to build up to five sets and i might not be able to handle five sets of 10 and push it we'll find out but we need to get up to 405 for sets of 10. Same thing, I've already said the glute bridge, I've done 515 for five by 10, we need to get to at least 550. When I hit these two, I know that my posterior chain and everything will be strong enough to hit the lifts I wanna hit. Okay, I know that I will have a massive deadlift PR when that occurs. So I need these to come up and when I need the grip to improve. Grip, 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 grip. And from now on, it's gonna be very deadlift specific grip. I don't care about general grip training. I've got a good general grip. It just chews my hands up though to be squeezing the grippers for high reps and all that stuff. This stick with just the static stuff. Bar holds. Pen lay rows every workout. And then pinch blocks. And I'm going to try to take weekends completely off from any grip training. So that when we get back over to Tuesdays and we pull, because we're going to pull to a heavy single of some type except when I do deadpan good mornings, we're going to do squats and we're going to do deadlift variations for maxes on all these yummy days. The way I'm going to work it, uh, I feel that my conditioning and work capacity is high enough to get away with it now. And I'm doing a ridiculous amount of GPP in my off days, sometimes on my main days, right? I just don't do it on, I don't do it on my lower body days. I do GPP up to five times a week. Conditioning is up. So we'll do the two and then I'll work in good morning for certain types. I may work in eccentric good mornings or in place of a squat and then dead stop like off of the, the safety slings uh, in place of some of my deadlifts. But we're going to hit two lower body maxes so that I get more practice with maxing. And then we hypertrophy everything else. Uh, then we did, I only got the three sets of that with 355. So we need to get up to 405. And I've done 375 for sets of 10. I have to build back up. Then we did the glute ham raises with the plate. And again, trying to get full range of motion of the hamstring. And I know I'm a bit over a bit, but that's just what's comfortable for me to be in the position at all. But it works the holy hell out of my hamstrings. And I'm on a pretty hard setting, as you guys can see. My knees stay up on the pad the entire time. So I grabbed the 10 pound plate and we got five sets of 10 today. I've done three sets of 10 with the plate. You guys have seen me do five sets of 20 without a plate. But that weight makes a big difference up on the chest. Makes a big difference. But five sets of 10 today. Keep the hamstrings going. So that's, that's going to be our, our big accessories for the day. It's going to be grip work, the heavy good mornings, 
power type good mornings, glued ham raises. Then we did Penley rows and reverse hypers. So everything got worked. Everything at least it would be involved in the deadlift. People would say, well, what about the squatting? Well, this is all the squatting muscles except for the quads. Now, do the quads get worked some on some of those good mornings? Yeah, with the power ones. I'm doing a ton of sled dragging, and I do plyometrics. Okay. My quads are getting plenty of work. And you guys notice when you watch me do all that work inside that rack, let's not pretend my quads aren't growing. My quads are jacked. And they'll keep growing from what I do. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. We need to get the hip extensors stronger, glutes, hips. I mean, obviously hamstrings. We can never have hamstrings that are too big or too strong. And this is even injury prevention. All right, we could argue that maybe the glute ham raise might not give amazing carryover to stuff like the deadlift due to the angles involved. Okay, it'll give some carryover about injury prevention. This helps keep us from injuring a knee, helps keep us from tearing a hamstring. So we can never have too much hamstring development from an injury prevention perspective because that's also the name of the game, guys. I cannot get hurt. So we do this stuff like this because we know it'll keep keep ha from having muscle balance issues. It'll get me hurt because I pulled hamstrings before. You guys have seen me before when I wasn't doing much direct hamstring work at all. You guys have seen me post up like an eight inch black spot on the back of my leg just from a pulled hamstring before. Deadlifting a lot less than I deadlift right now. So it matters. And this stuff's all coming along nice. I already feel the deadlift's going to be fine. It's going to be a matter of, of grip. But we are prioritizing grip. We're going to keep prioritizing grip. I mean, if I'm in a situation where my grip is a limiting factor on a, on a deadlift, hey, great. Because I can keep training the grip easy. I feel like it is right now. But we continue to work all the muscles involved, right? Because eventually the grip will get caught up and we need to make sure everything else is caught up top to bottom. All the muscles in the back, including the lats, the traps, all of those things, they impact the deadlift. Okay, now we could argue, well, lots of guys have any of these muscles underdeveloped and pull over 500. Yeah, that's true. There are guys out there who don't have lats who pull over 500. There are guys out there who don't have hamstrings who pull over 500. I don't know if we're pulling 700. That's the sort of goals we're reaching for. And then I did pen light rows, 5x10, straight weight today. You guys have seen me use bands, you see me use chains. We went back today, get a day of straight weight. I'll do bands towards the end of the week. I like it on speed days a lot. I feel like it works with dynamic days to, to pull against bands. So we'll continue that trend. Uh, but for those curious, as far as total weight, 185 today. Five sets of 10, pretty strict. I had to rest pause some of it near the end. You know, but we need we need the extra back development and we need the grip training. Okay, we can never have too much back development for any of the big lifts. And it's not the only thing I'm doing for upper back. Obviously, we do the snatch grip high pulls. I do some band pull aparts and stuff. But I feel like the rowing and the snatch grip high pulls are really going to be the difference maker and and by me using different forms of accommodation and stuff on them I can break up the staleness we can avoid acclimating we can avoid overuse injuries and still keep these two basic movement patterns in and they're both explosive type movements although these weren't as fast so I got to the final set I got to the last set and then I focused on really exploding that weight hard so I realized okay I'm almost goofing around on some of these rest pausing moving is somewhat slow so you know I got into the last one and I just pulled as fast as I could. Tried to get more aggressive uh, because I wanted that last set to count. I think I ended up doing like an 11th rep. But the rows, rows have always helped my deadlifting. And I feel like I've got to get the pin leg rows back in. And as far as upper back recovery, I'm fine. I'm doing so much restoration work for the low back. I think all the reverse hypers, uh, I think we can easily get away with doing 20 sets of pin legs every week. You know, I think I can get away with it. And again, I could use the back development. I could use the grip training. We could use the deadlift carryover. Because these are the movements that are really going to make or break me on the deadlift. It's going to be what? Good mornings. Reverse hypers. Pendley rows. Those are my deadlift builders. 
right? That is what really is going to get me up there. Not saying other lifts don't contribute, but those those are the big three. That and then grip training. But the rows contribute to the grip training, right? By doing tons and tons of barbell rows with a normal barbell, we're getting more and more practice gripping that bar. Double overhead, which I need. It's not as big a grip training as the other stuff, but it does contribute and it does count and it does matter. So we'll use it. we we'll use every tool at our disposal. So it's going to be all the rowing, just squeezing the bar harder in general on all my benching. Going to be those holds, right? The above the knee rack pulls for grip training. And then some pinch block work. But I think that the holds are going to be probably the most important thing out of all of those. And we did a weight increase. Took me a couple sets to kind of get back into my groove on these today, though. I felt like the final set, I really got more into the groove. Try, try to find that best angle to where I really work my low back without letting the, the weight swing too far forward. So I'm trying to control the eccentric a bit more. But, you know, we ended up increasing the weight today. Increasing the weight. And I, I think the last set, I ended up pushing it out a few more reps after 10 because I finally got kind of into that groove and learning to control it better and better because I need to PR on this but I need it to be correct I need it to be controlled reps not letting it swing way forward not cheating you know so I need that back traction but I feel like again increasing tension on this and I don't know necessarily what weights I need to hit I, I think with Clint Darden's standards they're probably too high unless you're swinging a lot maybe I'm wrong Maybe I need to be back at that, that sort of benchmark, right? Maybe I need to be up to doing 425. I don't know about 25 reps. But, you know, 65% of, the, of your, your deadlift goal, maybe at least for sets of 10, mm, possibly. So maybe I need to be looking at those percentages of 700. Because I've already pulled 625 off a deficit with a, with a stiff bar. And anyone who's pulled with a stiff bar versus a deadlift bar knows. And look for me, look how much strength difference I lose for every inch of deficit. Okay? It's it easily 20 pounds or more. Because my two inch deficit is, or two and a half even, is that what it was when we did? My two and a half inch deficit was only 585. My one inch deficit was 625. And then that five and a half, I mean 455. So, I don't know, how much am I losing with that one inch? How much am I going to get out of a deadlift bar? I guess we're going to find out, assuming I can grip it. Okay. But, workout was good today, happy with everything. Uh, everything went good. I feel good, so I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.